So as you know, we're over a year into the Summer Wells case. And the only real fact that we know is that on the 15th of June 2021, Summer Wells was reported missing. She was reported missing. There was a lot of stuff that was happening around here. And it's difficult to understand the the mechanics of how this would have worked. You know, pretty much every single person has ruled out stranger abduction. I think that this is just so unlikely that some stranger just happened to venture up onto the hill and grab Summer. It's just so, so unlikely. It's not impossible, but we're talking about a chance that is minuscule and so many other more likely scenarios. And the sad fact is there that when I say so many other more plausible scenarios, they point at the people around Ben Hill Road, specifically the people who had the most contact with Summer. We've touched on the fact that there could be a happy ending to this, and this could have been something to do with the SDA church, but the argument there is simply that why would the SDA church risk doing something that is ultimately nefarious, even though that could be good intentions, there are other routes to take. Some people have said that the SDA church with nefarious activity in the background, what some people have linked them to, that there is an element of thought that with connections to billionaires in other states and, you know, who seemingly have connections with at least two people in this case, that was there a trafficking scenario? Was Summer lifted from Ben Hill Road in this instance? And look, again, it's not impossible, is it? plausible is certainly plausible because we know that trafficking around this area in the states as a whole is a massive problem and the industry itself is one that is 150 billion dollars in power so pretty much you could say that they could infiltrate law enforcement they could indeed infiltrate child protective services if they wanted it's not unheard of some people have come across and said, how about the unlawful abductions by CPS themselves? This is something that we do see as well. There is evidence of this happening. But at the end of the day, someone went missing. She went missing and we can go round the houses and look at lots and lots of plausible scenarios. But what truly is the most likely scenario? Now we've come a year down the track and seen what we see. Now I think one of the most likely is that there was an accident and a cover-up. But then you've got to think, who did the covering up? You know, some of the elements of this, like people have pointed out, that there seems to be elements of truth in it and woven in with lies. But with these truths, it kind of renders certain people out of the equation to a certain degree. Like we speak about Don being at work. Now, if Don was indeed at work and he was 25, 35, 45 minutes away, and the call that he made to 911 was indeed confirmed that it was approximately 40 minutes away from Ben Hill Road, then you can pretty much say that Don didn't have anything to do with summer's disappearance directly but was there an accident and was there a cover-up and was don even told was don given a version of events that other people wanted him to believe was true was there a pact between other people around ben hill road that they would have to cover something up and they would indeed lie to don even and if that is the case who would be the people who would do that does Jodie Sue Brown know more? What was going on around Ben Hill Road? The party, the fact that Don was seemingly distraught in the, the hours leading up to when Summer would go missing. Some may say that that was an indication that this was pre-arranged, pre-planned. Or was there something else cooking in the background? There was allegations surrounding the party. There has been things that have been brought up about girls around Ben Hill Road at 110 and Andy Bernard supplying narcotics for the purpose of rendering them subservient. 
Now look, we can't mention who these people are, these children, but there is at least three young girls who had access to 110 Ben Hill Road. And what if there was an accusation made and Don knew that this accusation had been made and the impact that that could have upon him and his family? Would that not be something that he could be distraught over? You've got to think, you have a party... Shortly after the party, Don is distraught. We've learned the aforementioned accusations were made. Pair that with what we've learned about Andy Bernard and the supply of narcotics for the purpose of such things. Is a pattern emerging. There is a pattern emerging. And it would appear that Don has also referenced the fact that it was Candace's friends who were the nefarious ones who could potentially put her in a position of being not perhaps caught in the best light. So Don is forever distancing himself. He is aware that there is a potential for something to happen. He stated the fact that he has alibis and the fact that Candace doesn't. He, over a few days leading up to Summer Going Missing, he was taking the Subaru to work, to a dry lining business, that why would you want to take the new truck, unless you was feeling that something was bubbling, something was going to happen, and that was indeed your alibi. Maybe the seven alibis that he was talking about was the seven days that he took the the truck, the, the Subaru to work. So it couldn't possibly be him because he could prove where he was in the days leading up to whatever happened. And... But someone had a pact around there. That's my feeling. Something happened. Something was covered up. And it's about finding out who exactly were the people who covered up whatever happened. And what was it that happened? Was what happened to Summer connected to the accusations that were made at the party? Or was there an altercation following those accusations that resulted in Summer being hurt, maybe directly or indirectly, but it forced some people's hands to do something to, um, to rectify that? There's a lot going on in this case, and as you know, and as you can see... This is why this case is so difficult to bring to a conclusion. There were so many things happening around this child. Poor Summer didn't stand a chance. She rarely, rarely didn't. And it would seem that there was something bubbling in the background leading up to the day she went missing. That either on the 14th or 15th of June, the whole place imploded. I'll catch you all in the next one.